man. Man, oh man, oh man. That is weirdly fascinating to see again. Hello everyone, it's me. I'm back on ukulele. Did you ever think this was going to happen? Did you ever think I was going to come back to this? Well, unfortunately, there's been an update. Or maybe it's fortunately, I don't know. But uh, I wanted to give it a little check out. Um, it actually came out yesterday, but I didn't get much of a chance to check it out because by the time I found out it was about 7 o'clock at night and I wasn't in the mood for recording. Uh, it is now 8.30 the next day <laughs> in the evening. <laughs> And now I'm deciding to do a video. Um, so the updates are as follows. Uh, first of all, they updated the um, uh, impossible lair on uh, the impossible lair. Um, so I probably shouldn't say that because I'm talking about ukulele specifically and not the sequel. But yeah, in the sequel, they updated the impossible lair, which uh, I might or might not check out in a video. Um, but then they updated the original game. And they added the 64-bit tonic. So I'm going to log into one of my games here. Oh my god, I forgot how how long it took me to complete these. Jesus Christ. Do you, do you know, these timers need to be fixed, Playtonic. These timers need to be fixed. They're broken as shit. They actually still keep going when your game is paused. I didn't realise this. But they actually keep going when your game is paused. If you leave your game on and you press the start button and leave it paused, the timer just keeps on ramping up. It's not supposed to do that, Playtonic. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to stop when you pause the game, right? So that should not be 58 hours. That should be way less than 58 hours because that is not how long this game takes to beat. Uh, it's not how long it took me either. I mean, if you calculated up all the time of all of my videos for my playthrough, um, and then added on maybe an extra hour or two for stuff I cut off through the LP. It would probably only come to ooh, a third of that time. Uh, 20 hours maybe at most. <laughs> Far less than that I'd think. But yeah anyway, um, we're taking our nice slow pace here to uh, have a good look at this 64-bit tonic. We're going to get in, we're going to activate it, we're going to have a bit of fun for 20 minutes. Uh, I'm hoping for for about 20 minutes anyway. I don't want this to go on too long, but I want to I want to you know just chill. I haven't played ukulele in over a year, and uh, and I, I'm not exactly going to be playing playing it. I'm just going to be checking out each of the worlds and what they look like to, uh, you know with the 64-bit filter on. But yeah, in case anybody is wondering, I did play through this entire game uh, <clears throat> from start to finish, 100%. Uh, I played it from the day it came out on the 13th of April 2017, or maybe it was the 12th, maybe it was the 9th. It was sometime in uh, early to mid April. But yeah, uh, I did my first part on the day of its release and uh, it took me two years to uh, actually get through the entire game because I kept delaying. So, oh, wow, okay. So when you finish the game and you come out, this is apparently where you come out, the Hybrid Towers elevator. Uh, okay, so where can I activate my Oh, I have to actually find Vendi to activate the bloody tonic. All right, fair enough. Let's uh, let's see if we can find Vendi then. Um, I'm gonna have to actually look around. I can't remember where Vendi is. Uh, but yeah, so I did play this game from beginning to end, and uh, it was okay-ish. Uh, I mean, actually, this is a good opportunity playing ukulele again now for me to talk a little more about you know now that i've had a year to stew and think about the whole playthrough from beginning to end uh, i actually did enjoy ukulele for what it's worth you know I, I know i kept shitting on it and even today i still think there were some problems but for the most part i think i really enjoyed the experience uh and and even though i like pushed myself a bit too far to uh uh, talk about specific or, or sorry to, to, to keep playing specific parts that were really difficult that I probably should have just left well enough alone You know, I still went ahead and I still got it done and I still finished the game a hundred percent like I promised I would so ah Man now that is something I've been waiting to see for a very 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 long time 64 bit mode you can only activate one thing at a time all right that tonic should help your day job. And here we go. This is it. This is the fucking 64-bit tonic. This is, uh... Wow. Wow, wow-wee. That is, uh... 
I'm just I'm just paying attention to the actual like what it what what all, all of the uh, things in the world look like in this in this tonic. Um, it's actually rather interesting to me because uh, a, a lot of this stuff just looks uh, exactly the same. Oh Jesus! Okay, that's uh, that's not great. A lot of this stuff looks exactly the same. It's just um, have it has a filter over it. Like you can clearly see that all of these models are exactly the same. Where Ukulele's model is uh, uh, much more polygonized. Um, none none of this stuff actually looks polygonal. Um, I mean, I mean, credit where credit is due. Obviously, they put a lot of effort into um, uh, into creating a filter that looked, you know, semi-realistic. It has to be said, uh, or, or at least realistic in terms of what they were going for. But the only thing that's polygonal and clearly polygonal is Yuka and Laylee's model. The models of everything else is not polygonal. Uh, these rails, they're not polygonal. Uh, these platforms, they're not polygonal. Uh, they're just lower quality. You can even see, like, the, the uh, anti-alias thing has been turned off. Put, like, this filter has turned off anti-aliasing because you can see, you know, all of these uh, edges are not sharp. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, credit where credit is due. It is, like, it does look really good. Uh, but let's let's actually take a look at a world with this turned on. So, um, I don't know, Gl Clear Glaze Glacier, I mean, we're right next to it. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's let's check out Glitter Glaze Glacier. Oh, do you want to expand Glitter Glaze Glacier? I already expanded Glitter Glaze Glacier. What? What? Are you mad? Are you mad, video game? Are you have you have you gone absolutely insane? All right, let's explore the world a little bit more then. Uh, well, actually, no, what? Let's just go in the fucking book, man. I don't care if the whole world is there or not. I just want to see what it looks like. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. That's what we're interested in. We're interested in seeing what's going on inside the world. Yeah. I do like the detail, though. And I do appreciate the polygonal Euclid and Laylee models. But I'm still disappointed that they didn't uh, polygonize all the other character models in the game. It's a little disappointing, it has to be said. It took them this long to get the 64-bit tonic ready... And they didn't even bother to polygonize any of the other models in the game. Very clearly. Um, I mean, like, like I said, just, just to reiterate what I said. It's very clear um, that this filter, or what this filter is, right? Um, all of the models in the game, all of them, uh, are exactly the same other than you and Lately. This is just a filter. And it is a filter that essentially turns off anti-aliasing, which you can see because all of the edges are not sharp. Um, and it also adds this sort of grainy uh, kind of effect over uh, the screen, which makes everything look very old school. But if you took, the f if you took this filter off and changed nothing else, uh, including the anti-aliasing, you'd still have this effect where the edges on everything aren't sharp. But this, uh, this filter that's covering up um, you know, the, the more clear uh, colour is going to disappear and you'll see it as it is in the original game other than, you know, the lack of sharp edges. So, anyway, let me, uh, let me go out into the world here and we'll have a little look at what the world actually looks like out there. Oh, man. I wish I should have turned on... Um, oh, well, actually, I can't turn on more than one sheet, so that would have been useless to me. All right, let's have a little fly up here. Get a little high, you know, a little bit higher. Oh, okay. That's a new feature that I uh, couldn't have noticed while I was in the lair. The lair. They seem to have added um, a sort of distance fog on this filter as well. So you can only see so far and everything past that is, uh, is shaded. That's pretty. That's a pretty interesting uh, effect for the filter, to have everything sh uh, in the distance shaded. Um, but it is a bit like, it is a bit too obvious. I mean, look at that. Look, can you see? Can you see how like as I turn, the filter moves with me. The wall of it is very, very clear down there. That is. Um, I mean, given that is exactly how they used to work in old games, but still, that is a bit like, uh, I don't know how to feel about that. Whether I should feel nostalgic or just a bit on edge because I know what the game's supposed to look like. 
but yeah, that is, that is pretty cool, like that everything is sort of, you know, shaded in the distance, where, where it's out of the, the wall of this filter, so, but let's have, let's have a look at, like, the details of things again, like, because I, I don't know, I keep saying that um, underneath this filter everything is, is exactly the same as it is in, in the, uh, without the filter, uh, and the only model that's changed is Yuka and Laylee, but I also keep getting this, this uh, doubting thought in my mind, like, uh, like I'm wrong in some form or fashion, like this is all remodeled textures or something like that, but I don't know, some, something is just telling me that these textures are exactly the same under the filter, and that they haven't been changed at all. I don't know. I haven't played this game in quite some time though, so you'll forgive me for being a bit wrong. I can clearly see the the, the colour has been changed as well, obviously. Um, there's there's a lack of, of colour in this filter uh, to make it a, a little more, uh, you know, of a, of a, a plain palette uh, like original older games were. Because older games have a much more plain RGB palette because of the, you know, the small size uh, on those cartridges. Um, so they, they couldn't put the entire colour spectrum into a game, only only a, a, a specific set of colours, a smaller set. Uh, and they've obviously, with this filter, they've, they've put like a limitation on the colour that can come through from things. So everything's a bit more plain looking, rather than like really, really colourful, like it uh, is, usually is. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I've got the basic gist uh, with this world though. So let's uh, let's go back uh, to the book and let's try going back to the first world because that world is obviously the one that uh, most people starting a new game with this filter are going to see first of all. Uh, we may even go back to the hub world as well actually. That, that might be a good thing to do. The place that everybody sees when they start the game. Uh, it would be interesting to see what, what that place looks like. What, what is it called? Pirate something? I can't remember. I wonder if the 64-bit tonic... Actually, hold on. There is a 64-bit filter already in uh, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair that you can unlock. It was there from the beginning of, of the game's release, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I ever tested it, though, because it took me ages to unlock it, and by the time I'd done that, I'd done everything in the game. I may, Do you know, I may have to just check out Ukulele and the Impossible Lair again on video. I, now that I know that there's an easier way to beat the lair, I need to practice with it so that I can, you know, get good at it. And then I may actually do a playthrough of Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. But considering that SpongeBob game is coming up and I really want to do that SpongeBob game, I'm uh, I'm on edge about, about doing that, you know. If I was going to do the Impossible Lair, I probably should have done it back when the update came out for it, which was a couple of months back. I probably, if I'd done that instead of doing the banjo Tui parts that I've been doing. I probably could have saved the banjo Tui parts for a different time and focused these last couple months on playing the Impossible Lair. But I kind of, I don't know, d d the schedule is off, you know, lately, so so forgive me. Um, but anyway, man, this is crazy. I'm kind of enjoying this. This is a really interesting trek back through uh, a game that I spent two years playing on and off. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's weird for me to come back to this. But I keep I keep looking at all the textures around me though. Like this is this is something that that is really putting me off. I keep looking at these textures around me, and I I know that these textures cannot possibly be retextures. It just doesn't make sense for everything to be retextured. To be polygonal this filter is if if, if all of this uh, uh lower quality textures that i'm seeing if that's all part of the filter i do have to say that is a fascinating technology to be able to create a filter that you can put over the top of a game where the original game is still underneath but the filter makes it look completely different because i am seeing you know that all these textures are downgraded oh shit okay how the hell did i get turned around there I am seeing that all these textures are downgraded, but very, very clearly, like, they're not different, like Yuka and Laylee's model are. You can see how Yuka and Laylee's model are different, whereas all these other models look practically the same outside of have, having a, a lower texture, like, lower quality in their texture and, uh, uh, and no anti-aliasing and also the colours sapped out of them. I hope I'm not repeating anything that I've like already been saying. I'm trying. I'm trying not to repeat the exact same things over and over again, but just sort of elaborate on them a little bit more because I don't know. There, there's there's like this weird nagging thought in my mind that um, 
I'm missing something big here. But I don't know. I'm just I'm just going off of what I can see. You know, that's all I'm doing here. This is like a review, basically. All right, here we are. Tribal Stack Tropics, the first world in the game. And you know what? This is fascinating. Uh, no, that's not right. No, that's also not right, but I will take it because I can use that to get up to a, a bit of a higher location, a bit of a higher vantage point to have some uh, little look-sees around these. Wow, okay. This is the first world in the game, and man, oh man, is it weird to look at with this texture pack, with, with this 64-bit uh, this filter. This is weird. Also, all the worlds seem to have been um, uh, uh, turned back to their original versions. You can see the expansions are missing. Um, that's really weird. I, I don't know, does it do that after you finish the game 100% and just allow you to upgrade them for free again, I guess? Or downgrade them for free as, as well if you want? I don't know. Well, anyway, this is uh, this this is weird to look at. I mean, I'm tr I'm trying to I'm trying to think, you know, what would be a a, a, a good way to review, I guess, um, what I'm seeing. So again, obviously, we can see that this filter has a wall. It has a limit to which you can't see past, and everything past it looks a bit darker and shaded. Um, but looking at things from a distance. Yeah, you can really see how the filter affects from a distance. Look at the tree, right? If I if I try and get this so that it's, you know, somewhere I can point to. So in the bottom right corner there, you see the tree. You see look at the leaves on the tree. I'm pointing at it like you can see me pointing at my TV screen. But look at the leaves on the tree, right? It's quite a distance away, you know, and you can see as I move the camera around on that tree, you can see how the texture because of the anti-aliasing uh, and and the sort of uh, pixelation effect you can see sort of how how it jitters a little which is an effect that many old games do have obviously because of the lack of, of texture and and, uh, and render distance um, I don't know how they achieved that but that is a very cool little feature to have uh, you know adding to the effect on this filter uh, and you can see it in everything that's sort of a mild distance away from you that's large enough to see it on details like that pattern on the ground now in the bottom right the circles obviously that you can you can tell what it is and you can see how the filter affects it as you move um, but as you get like really really far away to things you can barely see uh, like uh, over, over now in the top left-ish corner, uh, you can see there's like a bunch of shit there that you can sort of barely make out because uh, that far away, the filter makes it look all pixelated uh, and and you know kind of hard to to, to distinguish, um, which is how these textures work. Is is how render distance works. Uh, in older games, so that's that's pretty cool how they've done this uh, and also actually I'm noticing the lack of textures uh, really like uh, uh, Well on on this block. I'm standing on you can clearly see the lack of, uh, of, of Texture on this block, which is insane There's a lot more detail on here in the uh, in the actual like underneath the filter uh, I wonder if we could find Vendi and turn this filter off just to see what the world looks like without it again um, I can't remember where Vendi is in this world though, which is kind of uh, upsetting. Ah, wait, no, I remember now. I remember she's uh, she is there. There we go. Okay, so we can actually do a little bit of a comparison now. We can we can go back up there after we've deactivated the, the filter. Oh my god, I, I'm I'm just noticing the uh, the lack of texture on on even Vendi as well now. Uh, okay, let's. T oh my god. Okay, okay. Even just in the background, I can see how the filter affects. Okay. Alright. Okay. Let's re-establish something then. My points about uh, how how the original textures are underneath the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the filter 
Uh, let's let's revoke that, shall we? Because very clearly, um, the filter has uh, a severe effect on not just the color palette, but also the actual textures on everything. Uh, the color from everything is sapped. These patterns, you cannot make them out. Uh, that down there, like, obviously, you know, it's sharp. You can see it without the filter. Uh, and the colors are, you can actually see the pattern in the circles, even from here. In the filter, it's all just red circles that you can only just about make out. Uh, that area over there that I was looking at, we'll talk about the tree in a second, but that area I was talking about over now in the top left over there, you can now, even at this distance, make out the objects. You can make out a wooden bridge, you can make out two, three concrete blocks over there, you can make out these towers with sort of, well, look like nests on top of them. You know, you, you can make this shit out and it's not pixelated and, and it's not blocky. Um, the tree, obviously, we'll talk about the tree. Uh, you can see the tree is, is sharp when you move. There's there's no pixelation there. There's a bit of blur because that's just just how these games kind of work in Unity. But uh, but you can for the most part there's nothing. You can see the sharp imagery of the leaves, and you can see the textures on them. You can see the texture in everything, even the concrete here that we're standing on. It's I I I could not. I can tell you right now, without turning that filter off, I could not have seen the pure difference between having the filter turned on and having it turned off. There, there is a distinct di uh, difference between the two. And now that I'm actually seeing it, I can appreciate even more how much work they actually put into that filter. But uh, I'm, I'm sure someone will make a much better comparison video for ukulele of, of what it looks like with and without the filter in various worlds. But I just wanted to give my take on it because, you know, I, I obviously spent two years playing ukulele and I've been waiting for this filter to come out. And even though it's not going to coax me back into playing ukulele again, uh, even off video, I certainly wanted to see what it looked like uh, as a finished product considering that I did back this game for a lot of money and was waiting just like everybody else for the extra stuff for this game that they had promised all that time ago. Uh, and now that I've seen the 64-bit tonic in action, I can tell you I'm quite happy with it. I'm quite happy with it. It looks great. Um, and as far as I know, when you start a new game, uh, you get the tonic like unlocked straight away. There's there's no requirement to unlock the 64-bit tonic like there is for the other tonic I, th I think you can just use it right from the get-go if you want from the moment you meet Vendi the first time so uh, Yeah, that's the only quarrel I would have is um, an option to turn it on or off from the main menu really like if you wanted to start the game from scratch and see everything with the 64-bit tonic right from the get-go uh, That would be really nice uh, I don't know if Platonic would ever actually consider doing that or not, but it would be nice to see the entire intro cutscene with the 64-bit filter over it, uh, and then obviously start the game with the 64-bit tonic on, rather than having to wait till you meet Vendi the first time to, to turn the 64-bit tonic on. That would be neat, uh, but so far as I can see, you can't turn the 64-bit tonic on without Vendi. So I don't think it's possible to uh, to see the, the intro cutscene or even the main menu uh, in 64-bit mode. But that would be that would be cool if you if Platonic could add that at some point. It, you know, being able to turn the 64-bit filter on on the main menu, have a 64-bit filter on the main menu, see the intro cutscene in a 64-bit filter. All of that would be neat. But otherwise, the filter itself uh, is fantastic. It looks great. So that's that's my take. That's my video. Thank you very much. And uh, I will see you in whatever I make next. Uh, yeah. See you guys later. Bye.